He looked good today, uh, and so uh, he's ready to go. We, we were planning on giving him a break on the first day anyway. We gave him one more uh, just to bounce back, and he, he looked fine, so um, he, he'll be part of the rotation. How's Daryl doing? Um, he practiced today, too. Um, uh, we'll get, let's just wait until we get all the way to game time and see if everything works out okay. Um, I think he's doing really well. He's really anxious to play and excited about that. And I'll be surprised if he doesn't. But um, just make sure you know he, the work that he did today was the most work he did this week. And let's just see how he comes back tomorrow. As far as you know, is, is it still nothing more than just a stiff man? Yeah. That's, I think I answered that right. Yes. The answer is yes. Yeah. He could go to the hospital. Um, I think, yeah, they took him to the hospital for, for his CAT scans you know, that night. And, and then he made it back and flew back with us, which is, that's a really good sign, you know. And, and so we were all uh, happy about that. How scared you must have been and all the teams? How crazy is it for you to talk about it? Yeah, you know, um, I, I think we got a mechanism, you know, that we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to wait and, and not call it and, and go to the, the dire end of what there could have been. Our guys were really, there was a lot of praying. There was a lot of, you know, just, just sending him love and, and, and support and all that with the thought that he's going to be okay. You know, we're all thinking that. And, and uh, he, he had a lot of movement and all that. So we were encouraged. And so now we just got to, you know, they got to prove it, which they did through the testing and all of that. So I don't think anybody went that far. You know, I mean, you know, that's, that's not the way it, it, it guys respond uh, in the moment. I guess, I guess it worked for those Well, yeah, the they put him on the, on the, you know, they put him on the cart and whenever they were doing that, you know, and he didn't want to do that. He was fighting and he, he, he would have done anything to let, you know, they, they just couldn't let him up. So um, he felt good enough to be arguing and griping about it and you know, complaining that, you know, that, you know, get me up, you know, that kind of thing. So um, anyway, we're, for, we're very fortunate. What did you see yes. with the focus level from your team yesterday? Uh, we, we had we had a, an excellent week. Uh, we really did. We, our guys jumped right back at it. We, there's a sense of urgency that what it feels like when you're playing in, in huge games. That's what's what this felt like this week. And uh, so uh, I got no no complaints about the way we 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 poured ourselves into it. Bobby talked about this a little bit earlier in the week. He has been in a situation like this before. I think it's 2015. Not many of the guys have. But what did you tell them about kind of where the season can go from here? Yeah. Well. Um, I, I did address that to some extent, not not any more than is necessary. I don't think. Um, we, we, you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. There's over two months left in this football season, and so uh, we got to go play the games, and everybody else got to go play the games too. And there's there, nobody knows what the story is. I mean, look what happened to Cleveland. You know, Cleveland was rolling along, and then and there goes their guy. You know, and and uh, you never know. So. Um, with that thought, what we have to do is we have to make sure that we can get our focus right back to what's at hand and not let concerns of other things that we can't control affect us. And so that's, that's we're trying to master that. You know, I've talked to you about that all the time. We're always trying to learn how to focus on what is within our control that's in front of us right now. And that's, um, that's a great challenge. And it's most teams can't do it. It's hard to do it, you know, and, and, and play consistently week after week after week. We're still trying to get that to that spot. And uh, this is a great challenge for us. It's a great team coming in and it happens to be a Monday nighter as well. All the rest of it goes on it. Uh, so this this will be an important, uh, important weekend for us. D Damian Lewis, where's he? Uh, he went through walkthrough today and uh, we got to wait and see. We'll, again, he'll go to game time. And uh, I, I can't call you. And, and Sidney Jones isn't even on the report, so he made it through yes, all week. He made it back. He was fine. Will he, st will we'll he start there? We'll we'll see. See. How's the Eskrim doing? Does he have a chance to get off injured reserve early as possible? I believe next week. Um, I, I don't. I don't have. He, we. He traveled this week. He was doing some special work outside of here, and and uh, um, I haven't seen him, and I haven't heard any report of what happened with, with his uh, the work that they did. So I can't help you, but I will. I mean, we'll, we'll revisit all of that for next week and see where he is. Well, the shot yesterday, obviously that guy is so talented, but so much he's been through over these last years with the injuries. How tough has that process been and how excited are you that he is wrapped yeah. up ready to go? It's been really hard, you know, it's because it's so long. It's just a rigorous return and it takes so much, you know, mind time and, and a heartfelt, you know, battling and fighting through it you know that and it was a real serious knee injury and so it took him all of this time and it affected other parts of other aspects he was a lot of out of balance on his return and it just took him time to get everything lined up and, and you know it was calf or whether it was a groin or whatever it was you know so he he's ready to go now and he's worked really hard in the last couple of weeks he actually was ready a couple of weeks ago and the idea was let's that's not enough let's just you know bust it and make sure that he's working at a level like we were practicing and we would be playing so that when he comes back he, he won't have to 
there won't be a, a transition any more than need be. So uh, he, he's he's ready to go. He's he's really mentally right and, and really excited about it. He's like a little kid wanting to play football, you know. And, and uh, but he, most of all, he wants to help his team. He really does. He feels that sense of responsibility. He wants to help us, and, and uh, um, so he'll get his chance. We're, we're excited about him playing. But Gino, it's one of those things. It's it, the first start's done, and now it's how much is he getting into that rhythm yeah, of the team? I, being I the think guy? it's only natural that you know that uh, you know he feels a little bit better this week. You know, he went through it, and, and uh, he, he he saw he could do it, and we could lean on him, and he could come through and make plays and all of that, and, uh, and all of that helps. You know, after four years of sitting out, or three or whatever, three and a half years of sitting out, you know, you need to get your confidence back aligned and, and all of that, and, and get your feel aligned, and so. Um, you know, it couldn't have been any closer. We go to OT against Big Ben in Pittsburgh, you know, and, and took us all the way to that. Um, so we're expecting that he's going to play well and he's going to feel more comfortable and all of that. And, and uh, he'll just run the club a little bit cleaner, a little bit better, and that'll help us all. We need to help him. Well, that's what we need to do. We need to help uh, Gino and make sure that we do everybody else, defense, special teams, the running game, the guys up front, everybody, and uh, and play a really good team game. Does the report that uh, the hand in Russ's finger is coming out? Next week, is that accurate? I'm, I'm wait, wait and see when they pull the pin. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I know it's coming. Well, I, I don't know. It just depends on the docs. I, I don't know where that report would have come from. It's, I think it's a good guess is what it is right now. But there's a chance. Jacob Eason, what did you see for him this week? Um, that he's a, a talented athlete. You know, you can see why he was the top high school kid in the country. You know, and, and uh, just natural motion, size, and, and power in his arm, and all that foot movement. Uh, natural athlete, all that you could see, all of that. We we actually gave him a lot of work against the defense this week, just to see him, you know, and just to see what you know what he brings. And um, so we'll see what happens. You know, it's just we'll take it one week at a time right now. You know enough for the game plan to be another tool. Not this week. Does that mean you're actually gonna actually gave you something right there? Does that mean you're gonna promote Jake Luton for a Talked to Matt Hasselbeck the other day. He mentioned that one of your first meetings in 2010, you showed all the film highlights throughout history, like 20, 30 minutes, and said, forget about all that now. Where'd you get that idea from to do that? Well, it was just, a, it's, it's, you know, there was, there's a past that you can't do anything about other than, you know, look at the highlights of it. And so that's, I, I wanted to make that point really clear, you know, that. That's then, and this is now, and and you know it's fun to have had that and all that, and you put it in your back pocket and pull it out when you want to, and you know when you used to have CDs, you know you could just throw it in the machine and away you go, um, and that's about how valuable it was yeah, to, to us starting all over. So um, I wanted to make the you know little dramatic point about that, and, and and on we go, and it always that kind of thought usually pisses the guys off a little bit, you know, because well you know give us any respect for from the past, but I, I proved to them that how much I respected to him. I wasn't worried about that. But I wanted to make a point and, and start new and get going. And uh, um, Matt was, a, as I remember, Matt was a great note taker. And, and uh, he, he, he didn't get it all right, but because I've, I've heard a couple of things <laughs> that, that he said about what we did and all that. He's a little bit off on a couple of them. But uh, he was great at understanding the approach and the mentality of it. And he was promoted for it. He was a great um, uh, messenger and, and disciple in a sense. Uh, and, and when you have your quarterback, uh, on board in that manner, it's really important, and it really makes a lot of uh, uh, makes a lot of things. It facilitates a lot of the transition, you know, aspects of what's bringing in a, in a new culture to a program. And, and uh, he was good. He was good at it, and uh, he was a blast. I love coaching Matt. He was so much fun, and, and uh, such a great competitor. And he tried so hard and cared so much, and had a great sense of, uh, of awareness and also a sense of humor and all that stuff. He was a blast. So I'm 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 so excited that he's he's going in. I just think it's great. Um, you said he loved your year, but he didn't think he would or didn't hope he wanted to. Um, <laughs> did you have to convert him? Did you think he was all... Well, you know, there's honestly, and I've, I've learned this over the years, that, that whenever you, you come into a new program, there's always resistors. You know, there's there's a resistance, and uh, because of the change, people want you know more comfortable with how things were, and so it's really important to identify uh, the resistors, you know, and, and and figure that out, you know, and and if if they're the hussars, then you better connect with them and make some some sense with them. So uh, he was really important to me, and so I I was talking to him a lot, it, it, you know, through the meetings and stuff because I needed him to come along with us, and and uh, so you know there was a time when I went to uh, San Francisco and and Kenny was was like one of the 
kind of the captains and, and Gary Plummer and Tim McDonald and all those great players, Merton Hanks, all those guys, you know, and to win them over, you know, and it, it, they, they had just won the world championship, you know, so you, it's, that's a great challenge in, in those meeting rooms and in the work. And so uh, I take a lot of pride in going after it and competing to, to get that done because the sooner you get it done, the better, you know, so it's, Kenny was a real pain in the butt, to tell you the truth, but um, uh, yeah, he was definitely one. And so um, anyway, so... Um, you know, that was, it was, again, I go back, we owe so much to that first team, you know, because we did in kind of remarkable fashion, you know, we won a division and, and all of that and, and uh, then got rolling in the playoffs and, and you know, so it was, it was a pretty exciting time. Back to the Saints this week, can you see Chris Richard's imprint on how the secondary is playing? Uh, they're really good technicians, you know, Chris was always really good at, at coaching the DBs and, and, and uh, all the stuff that they do, they have a real good style about them, and you know one that, of course, we recognize. And, and uh, uh, he's really good at it. Is that just something you gotta monitor all year? Yeah, we're, we're anxious to get to the break and see what happens. You know, he, he like he worked beautifully today, and, and uh, he's ready to go again. We just got to make sure we don't overdo it, you know, and, and where he gets where he's gonna have to miss some time. He hasn't had to yet, but we the. This is just the rhythms of the weeks to kind of learn what it takes to keep him at his best, you know. And so, um, we're, we're you know we're working right directly with him and listening to him, and and he's working really well with our trainers and all to make sure that we communicate all that stuff really well. What is going on? One of those parts. This was. Is there? Um, uh, John cramped up yesterday. He cramped up in practice. A um, little bit of a sore knee it was it was it was there, um, but uh, it was really he cramped up right in the middle of a route and we had to pull him out. Do you have any more an update on Chris Carson and what his situation is? Or? No, but other than that, he's working really hard. He's conditioning hard, and which is really important right now, so that when uh, when it's time, he'll be ready to to come back. He's not sitting sit, sitting around. He's really working hard at it, lifting and strength work and explosion work. He was on the hill yesterday. Uh, yesterday you know, really busting the tail, so he's doing good. But I, I don't have any, you know, any thought about when the time is. I don't have any update. Anything else? Thank you. Got it.